Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. On purpose, I fell. Are you all right? There. Well, go back to sleep, honey. What time is it? Three o'clock in the morning. We wrote and rewrote that script for 11 solid hours. That was worth it, right? No. <laughs> I never worked so hard on anything. All I have to do is get up in the morning and correct this darn thing. Honey, this is a newspaper. Mm, you going to correct the newspaper, dear? I thought I had the script in my hand all that time. Must have dropped it. Laura! What? What's the matter? Everything's the matter. I lost the script. You didn't. Buddy and Sally and I worked all night on that script. We put it in an envelope. I left with the envelope. I put it somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I thought that was your foot. I have, too, you know. Oh. <laughs> Don't you have a carbon copy of the script? By golly, we did. It was in the envelope that I lost. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Darling, losing a script doesn't make you stupid. Yeah, but hitting yourself in the head that hard. <laughs> Laura, are you sure? Maybe you left it at the office. No, I didn't, honey. I remembered leaving the office with it. Buddy dropped me off the cab at Grand Central Station. I remember leaving the cab with it. You sure you didn't leave it in the cab with Buddy? No, I remember because Buddy said something. Oh, he said, uh, Rob, don't forget the script. It's stinking up the cab. <laughs> I went through the east gate. I remember that. Stopped at the newsstand. I bought a paper and an orange drink and a big Irving. A big Irving? Oh, it's a new candy bar from Holland or Israel or Australia. Somewhere. <laughs> no, no, I had a grape juice, not an orange drink. Rob, what difference does that make? Well, uh, honey, I'm trying to remember everything. I walked away from the newsstand. Ah! What? I had a root beer in a big room. No. <laughs> Darling. Wait a minute, honey. It's all coming back clearly now. I took the paper. I sat down on a bench to read. And the train came in. And I don't remember getting on the train with it. You don't? I left that script in Grand Central Station. Oh, what a dope. Wait, stop. Instead of hitting yourself, darling, get up early tomorrow morning and go to the lost and found department and check for it. I'll drive you into town. You might as well get some sleep. I'm too worried to go to sleep. Mm. Oh, boy. Buddy and Sally are going to be so sorry for me. Sorry for you? Don't you think they're going to be just a little bit mad? No, oh, no, they won't be mad. They'll be sorry. If I don't get that script, I'm jumping in front of a train and they're going to be sorry. <laughs> What is that, guys? We've been here almost a half an hour, honey. It's because we're half an hour early. How's your headache? Well, I took a couple of aspirin. It's all gone, except for the pain. <laughs> oh, that script isn't here. Oh, good morning. Good morning, folks. Are you the uh, Boston Found Man? Yep. Oh, well, I lost a... Slow down. If you weren't in such a hurry, you probably wouldn't have lost that thing. Well, it wasn't a thing, exactly. You'll just have to wait until I open up. Now, where's that key? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I actually lost it. Once. There we are. 
30 years, I do this every morning. Now, you say you lost? Yes, I lost a, I lost a manila envelope that had a television script in it. What are you, uh, an actor or something? No, I'm a television writer. Oh, that's even better. She must be an actor. No, no, that's my wife. Oh, you're better off. <laughs> so you're married to a writer, huh? Yes, and my husband lost a very important manuscript. It was for this week's Alan Brady show. He writes for a big show like that? I'm very pleased to meet you. Well, Keen. Keen is the name. Harry Keen. Oh, nice to meet you. My name's Rob Petrie. Oh, I've seen that name on TV many times. Yeah, could you look for the uh, yes. script? Well, I'll tell you what. You just uh, fill out this form and describe what you lost. Well, it was just a plain manila envelope. Anything written on it? Well, there was a, a picture of a P-38 shooting down a Messerschmitt. Well, I was doodling. Honey, yeah, but... <laughs> you, uh, you, you put that on the form and put it all down and we'll take a look. Don't you think that my job would make a good TV series? Well, I don't know. I even got a name. I even got a title for it. Oh? Yes. Harry Keene, Lost and Found. <laughs> okay, here you are. Oh, yes, let's see. Now, we'll just take a look and see what came in here. Just a minute, please. Here we are. These are some of the things the porters found last night. Each one is a story. <laughs> oh, boy. If this rye bread could only talk. <laughs> There's no television script in there. Do you think it might turn up later? Maybe. You never can tell what'll happen in this place. It's the pulse of the city. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you uh, very much. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, honey. Where are we going now? I've got to go back to the office and tell Buddy and Sally I lost a script, and I want you with me. Me? Why? Because they won't hit me in front of my wife. <laughs> After all that work, if your wife wasn't here, I'd belt you. <laughs> you really didn't, right? I wish you'd quit saying that. I did it. I did it. I did it! Why don't you quit trying to alibi? Well, Rob didn't do it on purpose. Well, neither did Mrs. O'Leary's cow, but go explain that to the Chicago Fire Department. <laughs> well, all I know is I had nothing to do with it. Worked like a dog till three this morning, put in great jokes. From then on, I free myself of all responsibility. Mm-hmm. Boy, I'm telling you, buddy, that's what I like about you. Through thick and thin, you're never there. <laughs> you know you're all really acting silly. Why don't you just rewrite it? It's not that much work, is it? You know, I once wrote a composition that was six pages long. So you know what I did? I lost it. So I sat myself down in a quiet room with no disturbances. So, and honey, I... <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and do your shopping? There's no use in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll figure something out. We gotta talk about it, you yeah. know. Well, okay, but... Say, why don't you do this week's show about losing an Alan Brady show? A script like you did, and Alan would sort of have to... Limit, you know, just the way it happened. <laughs> you know? Or, I've got it. Why don't you take the best of Alan Brady? You know, where you take all the film clips of the past shows and put them in, like you did that time when Alan got sick, remember? You took best parts of all the shows and nobody liked it, did they? <laughs> well, I better get on with my shopping. Um, shall I pick you up some socks and underwear, darling? Well, you only have two pair. Honey, we're just a little edgy after last night, you know. Listen, Rob, you asked me to come. I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll call you. Well, she's concerned. Mm. <laughs> I think we better try and rewrite it. Why don't you just run out and buy some underwear? No, I'm serious, you guys. <laughs> Look. The script is fairly fresh in our minds. Now, we, Alan played Sherlock Holmes. Uh, uh, what's his name? Played Watson. Oh, boy, is it fresh in our minds. You can't even remember the name of the guest. We have got to hand Alan something today. Why don't we hand him our resignation? <laughs> All I remember is the jokes I wrote. Yeah, well, I only remember it was 32 pages long and a lot of hard work. Look, I think we can do it. Let's try. Rob, you lost the script on the train. I lost it the minute I left here last night. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. We had... Hey, maybe that's the guy from the Lost and Found. Hello. Hello. Is this the Alan Brady show? Well, yes, it is. Uh, is this the fella that writes the show? Well, uh, this is Rob Petrie. Yes, who's this? Oh, you don't know me. I'm a bum. <laughs> it's a bum. Oh, that's nice. I told my Uncle Phil not to call here. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, I, well, I found some papers I think belong to you. 
The bum found the script. Wow, oh, hey, I found it in Grand Central Station. I used it last night as a pillow. That's it, that's it. No, you got a good show. Well, thanks a lot. I always watch it in the window of a TV store on 8th Avenue. Look, can you uh, jump in a cab and get over here right away? We need that desperately. Yeah. I never got bus fare. Well, we'll, we'll pay for it. Hey, as a matter of fact, we'll, we'll be, be happy to give you a reward. A reward? Uh, do you think you can give me 25 bucks? You got it. 25 bucks? That's right. Look, that show's worth a fortune to us. Yeah? Oh, yeah, we've been going out of our minds without that, that script. A whole network TV show to miss. We could not do without it. We can't even duplicate it. No kidding. Yeah, could, uh, will you please get over here right away and bring it to us? Y yeah, only, only one thing. Forget the 25 bucks. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I want 2,500 bucks. Well, fine, fine. He wants $2,500 for it. 2500 Well, he can't be serious. Well, he sounds serious. Uh, look, b uh, bum, whatever your name is. Hey, hey, I'm not telling you my name. Well, I'm not, I'm not asking for your name. Look, we made a deal for $25. That's before I knew how much this thing is worth. That's uh, $2,500. Well, that's not a reward. That's ransom. No, I didn't steal it. I found it. Look, the script's worthless to you. Maybe I'll get some of my friends and do a show in the park. That's not funny. I'm dead serious, pal. $2,500. Take it or leave it. All right, I'll leave it. Yeah? Well, listen to this. What was that? That was page one of your script being ripped. Uh, oh, why, you... Think it over. I'll call you back. Remember, it's $2,500 or you'll never see a script again. Well... Our script is being held for ransom. Look, I got it figured out. Three and a twenty-five hundred goes eight hundred and thirty-three dollars and thirty-three cents, and you pay the extra penny. Come on, you're never going to pay that kind of money. We could have gotten it for twenty-five dollars if it hadn't been for Mr. Enthusiasm here. That script is worth a fortune to us. Boy, if I ever get kidnapped, I hope they don't call you. <laughs> Big mouth. I'm stupid. Stupid? Stupid. Well, if you want somebody to disagree with you, go look for a stranger. <laughs> I still think that bum was bluffing about that offer. But I'm sure he was. The thing is, we'll never get him back down to $25 again. How much do you think he'd want? I don't know. He sounded desperate to me. You know, I was thinking, when he calls back, what if we just offer him what we got on us? Make him a quick deal and maybe he'll take that, huh? Yeah. Nah, I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? We gotta do something. Besides, Mel will be back in here for the script any minute. Why don't we pool our resources? Wait a minute. I got, uh, I got 15 bucks. Darn it, all I've got's a five. I gave Laura her allowance. Well, that's 20. That's not a pool, that's a puddle. <laughs> How about you, buddy? I think this whole thing is kind of silly. He must be loaded. Grab it! All right. <laughs> All right, I got $77, but I was saving it for, for another occasion. Yeah, what other occasion? Arbor Day. <laughs> Arbor Day? Yeah. Every Arbor Day, I buy a new set of woods. <laughs> Look, buddy, you can get a new set of golf clubs tomorrow. I'll pay you back when I go to the bank. Well, there goes another Arbor Day. <laughs> Stand there with your hand out like that, you look like my wife. <laughs> All right, that gives us $97. Yeah, do you think that's enough? Well, I'd rather it was 100. 100 sounds like more. Well, it's 97 or nothing. Hey, speaking of nothing, look who's here. <laughs> Bye, Mel. Uh, Rob, Alan asked me to pick up the script. What'd he say? Fetch her. Go get it, boy. <laughs> Mel, we got a few more uh, jokes to go. We'll have it in a little while. Mm. Oh, well, shall I tell Alan you'll have it ready by 4 o'clock? Well, I don't know, Mel. What's that? Uh, that's money. A uh, contribution, Mel, for, it's for a uh, needy person. Uh, but would you like to toss in something? Why, certainly. Be glad to uh, give a dollar. I'm always willing to give a helping hand. Mm. Some helping hand. That ain't even a nickel a knuckle. <laughs> hey, Mel, you know, uh, two dollars more would make it a nice round figure. All right, two dollars it is. What'll I tell Alan about the script? Well, uh, tell him we'll have it pretty soon. All right. Uh, he won't be very happy about this. Hey, you want to make him happy? Shoot yourself. <laughs> you know the trouble with him? One day he's here, and the next day he's here. <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> okay, now we got a hundred bucks. Look, I'll pay you guys back. Oh, no, I think we should all share in the ransom. <laughs> What's keeping that bum? He should have called back by now. Yeah. 
uh, dinner tonight. Well, I don't care. It doesn't make a uh, roast steak, chicken, anything. It doesn't matter. Fine. I, just, I don't want to tie this line up. Hey, I'm expecting a call from my wife, too. Well, that was your wife. You're having chicken tonight. <laughs> Staring at it won't make it ring. <laughs> All right, I'm wrong. Hello. Hello? Well, what is it going to be? It's him. Where have you been? Hey, it took me a little while to pay handle the dime. Look, I've talked to my other writers. We've decided we will give you $100. How about $1,500? $100, not a penny more. I hate the haggle. I'll never be a businessman. <laughs> Good. Now, will you please bring it over here? I'm going to bring it any place. You take a hundred bucks and put it in a plain paper bag and bring it to 14th Street Park. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Hey, I saw it in the movies once, and it was perfect. Now, take the bag of dough and drop it in a garbage can. In a garbage can? Yeah, the one near the Louis Wexler water fountain. The what? The water fountain. It was dedicated by Louis Wexler. You'll see it. Take the bag of dough, drop it in the garbage can. I'll pick it up and drop you the script. You are ridiculous. Just be careful. And come along. Goodbye. What are you doing? Getting the paper sack. I'll see you guys later. Where are you going? I'm going to make the drop. Come on, Warren. Let's sit down, dear. My feet are killing me. I want a drink. Oh, drink. Uh, excuse me, is that the uh, Louis Wexler water fountain? I don't know. But anybody could drink from it. <laughs> oh, yeah, th there's the uh, plaque. Really? Yeah, I never noticed. Uh, excuse me, do you happen to have the time? I don't know if my watch is correct here. No, I'm sorry, I don't have a watch. Oh, but my son Warren does. Tell the man what time it is, Warren Angel. No. <laughs> Warren, you're gonna drive me crazy. He's gonna drive me crazy. Come on, push on the swing. Warren, please don't eat my heart out. You'll drive me to an early grave. You're just like your father. Hey, 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 fella. You got a little something for a needy bum? I sure have. You want me to put the money in the garbage can? Oh, you'd really like to take away my last shred of dignity, wouldn't you? <laughs> you should. I'll have you know, Hilliard Decker doesn't crawl for anybody. You know why you do. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Hilliard Decker. Try to bluff. If you want more money from me, you're not getting it. Oh, I don't want any more money. I, I, I'll try. I'm satisfied with this. You give that to me, or I'll call the police. Hey, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll split it with you. I don't want to split it. I want that script, uh, Mister. Well, what's the script? You know darn well. Wait, 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 w
I haven't made a phone call since 1947. Oh, <laughs> he did. Look, why don't we just all go downtown and talk it over? Wait, wait a minute. My bum's coming. He's expecting me. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. We'll get you a bum on your own. <laughs> guys called the police. They released me. I went straight back and checked the garbage can. Did you find anything? No, nothing. The sanitation department emptied it out. I should have gotten back there faster to check the can, but I... Did you ever try to explain to the cops about a brown paper bag with money in it? It takes a lot of talking. It takes a lot more to try and explain to Alan. No script. Rob, you really blew it again. Oh, come on, buddy. No, he's right, Sal. It's my fault. When Mel comes in here, I want to take the blame. No, no, come on, come on. We'll all take the blame. We'll, we'll, we'll each take 50% of the blame. That's three halves there. So forget my half. <laughs> yeah, Marge? Mr. Petrie, there's a bum here to see you. A bum? What does he look like? Never mind. I don't know what he looks like. Uh, send him in. You think it's him? Well, it could be one of the other bums wanting a handout. Look, don't rule out my Uncle Phil. Hi, everybody. Uh, my airplane. Hey, I stripped. Why weren't you at that park? I was. I saw you get hauled off and spill everything to that cop. You were there? Sure. I was a few minutes late. Hey, guys like us don't have any watches, you know. Look, if you want that money... Forget the money. Forget, forget the money? Yeah. Hey, hey, after the cops know everything about it... I, listen, if you don't take any money, there's no crime, right? Uh... I, well, I don't know. I guess so. Well, then why did you bother to bring that back at all? I figured if I throw the script away, I'd have nothing and you'd have nothing. Now, if I could send it to you, then you'd have something and I'd have nothing. But if I brought it up to you and you gave me the $25 reward, we both have something. He even thinks like my Uncle Phil. <laughs> what do you say, Phil? Well, I don't know. The guy tried to hold us up for ransom. Don't look at me. He's your friend. You know, I, I didn't really do nothing, you know. I, I, I didn't steal it. I, I found it. And I, I've been down on my luck. Since the last crash. Since 1929? Was there another one? <laughs> well, I guess everything worked out all right. So, here's your $25. Gee, $25. Gee, thanks a lot. And listen, don't say nothing to nobody, huh? You know, I don't want to go to jail, you know? When you're out of the park more than 30 days, you lose your bench. <laughs> Here, take this. Gee. 20 extra bucks. Thanks. Well, look, I don't approve of what you did or what you tried to do, but, well, maybe with $45, you can buy yourself a new suit. You know, uh, money isn't everything, you know? I'll say one thing. I have enough money saved for the rest of my life, unless I have to buy something. <laughs> Rob? Hi, Mel. Oh, excuse me. I, I came for the script. Oh, here it is. And I hope Alan appreciates it after all we went through to get it, to write it. Well, listen, I'll see you again. I gotta be going. So I'll take care of yourself and watch out whatever you do. And you too, take care. <laughs> Who was that? Mel, that's you in two years. <laughs> Now, the dance hall girl goes up to Alan and says, why did you become the sheriff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and Alan says, I used to be a cow puncher, but one of the cows started punching back. <laughs> you could, huh? No, that's terrible. He's right. It stinks. Forget oh, it. I wish you guys would make up your mind. You know, it's not easy to erase 11 carbon copies. <laughs> 11? Yeah, I'm not taking any chances. I'm losing another one. <laughs> Come on, you guys. We can get the joke. Hey, how about the one... Hi, everybody. Hey, hey say that. look at this. Yeah, eh? look at that, the Playboy of the Month. <laughs> well, uh, hi, good to see you. You look, you look swell. How you, how you been? Uh, thanks to you. I didn't get drunk. You know, with the money, I went out and I bought a brand new suit, a second-hand suit, and went and business myself. What kind of business? Stealing scripts. Here's one from the Jackie K show. <laughs> Where did you get that? Hey, with a new suit, you can get it anywhere. Hey, maybe you could use it, give me a couple of bucks. Look, I'm going to go to that phone. I want to call the Jackie K show. And if you don't get out of here right now, I'm going to call the cops. Okay, okay. Boy, that's the trouble with the people in the world. You try to help them out and all you get is aggravation. Aggravation and aggravation. You try to be a nice guy, go out, study, do things, work your knuckles and try. What are you going to do with a guy like this every time I figure it out? <laughs> about that guy? Of all the nerves, stealing jokes from another show. Buddy, what are you doing? Thought maybe I'd find a good cowboy joke. Here. Oh, <laughs>